Good morning. We are here today uh, to discuss some socialist thinkers and their um, interrogation of ecological thought. Uh, this is part of the UGC module, um, Society and Ecology. And we are going to discuss three thinkers, Peter Kropotkin, Murray Bookchin, and Karl Marx. Uh, Peter Kropotkin first. Kropotkin was born in Moscow. And because of his uh, radical communist thought and his uh, tendencies towards anarchism, he was imprisoned and then he fled from Russia um, into France and then England and returned to Russia only after 1917, uh, the Re Russian Revolution. Before going into Kropotkin's thought in detail, I'd like to discuss anarchism and its interrogation of the state uh, a little bit. Anarchism has great suspicion of a large role being played by the state in society. Families of humans combined into clans and tribes in which persons relinquish their autonomy to a centralizing force in order to re receive protection and security is usually thought of as the state. This process was, for Kropotkin, the key element producing state. It is here that human societies are different from their animal counterparts. They create more and more complex protecting systems in the form of tribes and so on. In the text, The State, Its Historical Role, Kropotkin delineates the rise of centralized monarchies in Europe in the Middle Ages. From the city-states, elites arose to compete for greater agglomerations of power and control. He comments that the nature of the state is fundamentally to discourage coalitions among citizens. People have a large swathe of interest domains where they can collaborate and help each other. The state will not let that happen. For instance, if a community decides to exchange food grain for water, they can very well ensure that the subsistence of all without the inter intervention of state is possible. Um, these are possibilities that anarchists are most interested in, in their political and social thought. Uh, now a little more on Kropotkin. Uh, Kropotkin advances a la radical intellectual move away from the notion of a center affirming its many parts in the knowledge project itself. In the essay, Anarchism, Its Philosophy and Ideal, he shows earlier physical sciences like astronomy were organized around the idea of a single um, activating system, center, like a star, the sum for our planetary system for charting the activity and inner coordination of its member celestial bodies. With the evolution of molecular theory, there have been changes in that lens. Celestial bodies are looked at as complete externally controlled things, but have having a vast and complex internal mechanics th through atomic behavior that determine its autonomous and co coordinated existence in planetary complexes. Similarly, the Political organism can survive without a center through several dispersed loci of power coordinating among themselves. This idea of moving away from the center drove Kropotkin's fervency for federalism and anarchism. If people were allowed to socially coordinate and reciprocate, much of their needs would be fulfilled and they would not have to have the need for a strong centralized state. In final analysis, he saw states as tremendous agglomerations of power, uh, ones that evacuated all other social formations of their power and autonomy. It may also be said that in large parts of the world, the sovereign state exists alongside other corpses of power, religion, family, corporation, and the state is not the only source of power. Grids of sovereignties reveal complex grammars of power across the globe. The neat arrangement of power between state and non-state that Kropotkin held may not hold true everywhere. Nevertheless, we can say about Kropotkin's fundamental aversion for state power that he imagined social organizations performing political and economic functions in an anarchist society, thereby reducing the capacity of the state for centralization. Nature arises in Kropotkin's work as a canvas for application of human production relations. His concern about nature stems from a concern about the how to imbibe empathy and associated values among human beings. Ge geography emerges in his thought as a 
mechanism through which to sensitize human beings about the radically different forms of existence. Kropotkin is also concerned about the life sciences and their systematized view of nature. He discusses Darwin and other evolution scientists. He comments on the juxtaposition of natural selection as one mode of evolution and environmental variation as another mode. He writes a vast array of essays commenting on the need to be close to nature through bodily work. A perfect balance in human existence can be achieved through a combination of field and factory, brain and bodily work to restore human rights life to the completion that industrial capitalism has deprived it from. In many ways, Kropotkin's views on the relationship between man and nature is akin to Marx. He does, see, does not see nature as a glorious preserve whose being must be accounted for as, se as a separate domain from human existence. I find it instructive to see Kropotkin and other anarchists as making the distinct shift in the study of rule in human society by make, taking the focus away from power. The idea that human beings can relate to each other from the disproportionate occupation of power is by one party and its exertion over another is at the core of their ide ideology. Some practical applications of this ideology as we have seen through later anarchists like Bookchin is in democratic and decentralized method of decisions regarding nature's use for satisfaction of human wants. But in principle, these thinkers are telling a whole lot, a whole host of political thought uh, of varying origin that governance can be ensured to procure good lives at, for a large number without the resort to complex machinations of power. At the core of their strategy is a move away from the phenomenon of strong centralized states. Although Kropotkin ad advocates a move away from the agents of social power such as priests and judges, he does not advocate a move away from forms of social power like education or medicine. So the picture of citizens as camouflaged agents of state power does not occur in Kropotkin's work as we get it in other Marxist work like Gramsci or Althusser. In the contemporary debates about the modern state and its vehicles, one might see Kropotkin as a refreshingly different voice, one that is advocating a view of social life in which the role of power especially state power, is minimized.